Horn Pier Point in Nottingham. Are you ready? Go! Go for it! This is, without any shadow of doubt, the major British rowing event of the year. Henley may carry the glamour, but when it comes to the nitty-gritty of rowing, Home Pierpont is what it's all about. In the first place, it's the only course in the country that's up to international standards. In the second, with nearly 30,000 people now registered at the Amateur Rowing Association, this year's record entry of 520 crews graphically illustrates the remarkable growth in the sport's popularity. And if any further proof were needed, the arrival of Her Royal Highness the Princess Anne to present awards signifies the royal seal of approval. <laughs> Competitive rowing really began in the early 19th century. Today it's developed into a highly technical sport with tremendous advances in both boat design and racing technique. One of the best known names of British rowing is Mike Rosewell, who's not only been a coach for the past 26 years, but has worked hard to broaden rowing's image, and is probably best known to rowing aficionados as the columnist Just Alf in Rowing Magazine. How importantly would you rate Home Pierpont and the rowing calendar? It's absolutely vital if we are going to compete internationally, because in international competition we have to race six lanes, and this is the only six-lane operational 2,000-meter course that we've got in the country. Now, we have taking place here today both rowing and sculling. Just explain to me the difference between the two. Well, simply, rowing you've got one oar, and sculling you've got two sculls, or two oars for the uninitiated, but we call them sculls. How are the races conducted? Um, well, there's a whole team of people involved. I mean, at the start, you've got an aligner on the side who makes sure that all six bows are level. You've got a starter standing up on a rostrum behind the start. Um, he starts it, then the umpire takes over from the boat. You've got a backup umpire in case that umpire's boat breaks down. And then obviously at the finish, you've got all the timing. You've got six people sitting as visual timers, um, as well as all the computer timing. So there's double checks on everything. I'll tell you something, Mike. It's a rather difficult sport for the spectator to follow because there's such a long stretch of water there. Well, I mean, it seems to me that very few people notice that there's a mobile grandstand, which um, like you can pay, I don't know, it's about 20p, and follow the whole race on the side. So Cheer to your heart's content. And you just sit on it and it follows the boat? It's a huge lorry with sort of seats on the back of it, yes. And I see that the, the coaches themselves actually cycle along the side and follow their crews that yes, way. Yes, we risk death that way, yeah. <laughs> um, it gets a bit hectic sometimes. Even the equipment itself has developed tremendously in the past two or three oh, years. Yes. I mean, this morning, for example, when my crew went out to the race, there's a headwind. And I spent the last half hour worrying what to do with the blades, whether to ease them off, harden them up. It's all now down to gearing. I mean, when I rode, you just got in the boat and rode. But now you've got um, adjustable riggers, adjustable slides, adjustable everything. And so therefore the coach is blamed if you lose because he didn't adjust by another centimetre. Well, what has been the reason for the, the great upsurge in popularity in rowing over the past decade? I think that a lot of people have realised that rowing is not just for the privileged. Um, I mean, there's always been town rowing clubs, um, but people have always tended to see the boat race in Henley and think, well, I'm not in that bracket. Um, there are literally hundreds of boat clubs in the country. Every piece of water's got their boat club. Um, you can go along, pay your subscription, and they range probably from 20 to 60 pounds a year, uh, depending on how big the club is, uh, and you get into boats that might be worth 6,000 pounds. The elite of the sport are oarsmen like 23-year-old Steve Redgrave, who last year was a member of the Olympic Coxed 4 team, which won a gold medal at Casitas. They've now got 20 metres to go, and Britain are going to win the gold. Britain first, the United States second, they cross the line now and there is gold for Great Britain. Martin Cross, Richard Budget, Andy Holmes, Stephen Redgrave, Adrian Ellison the Cox and those are names that will go down in the history of British rowing. Here at home Pierpont, he capped a string of successes by winning the men's 2,000 metre single skull event. Well, congratulations. Now, I know you expected to win the, the single skulls, but it was rather important in the sense it was your last chance to show your paces before the selection for the World Championship team. So were you happy with the result? Yes, I was quite happy with the result. Um, it was quite a big margin at the end. Uh, the conditions were very, very rough. Um, not ideal for, for racing rowing boats. All right for sailing boats, but not, not rowing boats. 
Um, but I'm very happy. It's my last race before the World Championships, so I'm very pleased. And what are your sensations when you're in an event like the Single Skulls and you're romping toward the finishing line? Um, when you're a long way in front, it's very relaxing and great. It's, it's really nice. But when it's a, a close race, it's, uh, you, can't really, you don't really think about anything. All you think about is getting to that line first. Now, the British attempt on the blue ribbon record for the fastest transatlantic crossing by a passenger-carrying vessel that we told you about last week has sadly run into trouble. The lads have been delayed in the United States by bad weather, but they do hope to set out within the next few days, and they should be well on their way by the time we see you next week when we'll be enjoying powerboat action down at Brighton. In the meantime, we leave you with more from the National Rowing Championships here at Home Pier.